is we have what we call the penny stocks, uh, safe investments, and then we have ones that are golden. So, and the first type is penny stocks. Uh, in my presentation, you can see the road tech type one because this presentation was actually targeted towards tech you know, by this guy called in Strat Strata, uh, Prata, but we can add, apply it as a principle. So we can apply it to ourselves the way it relates to us. It might not be tech, it might be learning, it might be arts, it might be, it might be in the field of marketing, it might be in the field of maybe, uh, it might be in science, you know, what those things, those skills in those areas that are learning. You know, they are the kind of, those are what we are referring to as talk. So we have what we call penny stocks. You say there is something called penny stocks, which are in penny, in, in financial investment, penny stocks are those stocks that are very cheap. You know, their prices are quite small. You know, like uh, I remember back then around 2006, you know, when this stock investment in stock was trending, there are some companies called penny stocks, you know, because their value are very small. They come in, they are new in the market. That's one of the reasons why their value prices are small. You know, so when you identify penny stocks, one advantage of penny stocks, they have the potential to grow big. Like it can multiply your money. Because I remember back then there are some companies that came onto the stock exchange. They don't have much name, they are not big, they are new. So their values are like maybe like one naira or two naira per share. You know, but this company, because they are coming in, they have a potential to grow. Something like one era, it, it can really go very low. Maybe last, last, if it goes low, it can go to just 50 kobo. But they have a potential of going from one era to 20 naira. If certainly, for instance, if a company like, let's say, Stockcom, for instance, now, let's say Stockcom goes into stock exchange and it comes in as one era, maybe in 20, 2015, is one era in stock. Maybe by the time government just gives Softcom a contract of ah, do empower as of 2016, people will just be like, wow, Softcom has become also Softcom stock can rise from like one era and become 20 naira. So anybody that buys a hundred naira worth of the uh, stock at one naira, you know, by the time it goes to like 20 naira, you know, that's times 20. It can and that's the thing about penny stock. So penny stocks can go very big. And there's a challenge with them, is like if it dies, that means we put in too much. If it dies, dies. So penny stocks can be like new technologies or new skills. For instance, maybe you just hear that uh, people are learning how to draw now. Or oh, let me use draw so that uh, I, won't, I won't be talking to one person. <laughs> let me see. Uh, uh, let me see. Let's, it, it, depending on your field, it could be something that is new. Maybe we can talk of uh, something, something that is... Um, Something that is new in town. For let me use tech for instance. Uh, maybe they just just learned that ah, now what is raining is a is a Android development. For instance, let's assume Android is very new. It's not. Let's assume it's not in existence before. Ah, I just feel that Android and you know, you just like decide to spend all your hour, all your energy learning Android. And after two months, you discover that the company that is pushing Android. Maybe it's a scam, for instance, and everything goes down the way. So there are penny stocks. These are new technology and things that are still new in the market, new skills that have not been proven yet. You know, they are still trying to get their stand. So there are penny stocks. Then how do you identify? Okay, I, I think I've mentioned how to identify penny stocks. There are new penny stocks. The market has not adopted it yet. The giants have not started using it. You know, the, the ecosystem in which you work. Here it says developer ecosystem. But the ecosystem, maybe, for instance, a new software in video editing, or a new software just came out. And then, ah, you know, because it is new software, so you just heard about it, like, ah, something, there's one new software called uh, that now, and you can edit anyhow. And you just abandon your Adobe Premiere that you've been using all the year and say you want to learn it. You know? It's a new penny store. Tomorrow, the company pushing it might go bankrupt, and another company might just buy it over, and it will no longer exist. So those are new stock, you know. And uh, another type of stock is safe investment. These are, they are like real estate. They are things that over the years, you know, for some they, they are safe. The returns might be very low, you know, might not be any much for me, but if you have them, you are safe. For instance, if you learn how to, like if you're in programming, if you learn how to, how to write algorithm, you know, it's not good. Algorithm has been around for years. It's just like real estate. If you know how to, it will, no matter the programming language you are learning, 
knowing how to do algorithm or knowing how to prepare, for instance, like, let me convert it into something, maybe how to make presentation, how to use, uh, make presentations now. It, it, the software might be changing, but how to make presentations, you always have to make presentations in whatever you are doing, in any, any area. So these are like, if you spend your time investing in out learning how to make presentations, you will be relevant in so many things, just like real estate. You know, real estate has been around, making presentations has been around for a long time. So this is a principle that we can apply to whatever. You look at what you are doing, you know, it's something, is it something that has been around for a while? It might not be yielding, instant results, but they will not change overnight. And a lot of people have, a lot of investment has gone into it. People are comfortable already in it. Then for incremental updates in these areas, you no, know, the things are not really changing like rapidly in those areas on like some new, new tech, but these things, they will keep paying you and they need less investment of time once you get them. You know, it, these are kind of the characteristics of uh, real estate. You know, things that if you learn it, you, you don't, once you understand how to do it, you don't really need to be learning, learning, learning how to do it. These are safe investments. So when you, are, you look at uh, those, and one of the most, most of the, uh, one of the most, the safest stocks of all time, like skills, like people skills, communication skills, marketing skills, these are things that if you have these skills, you can never run out of um, relevance. You understand? If you have people skills, whether you are a designer, whether you, are, whether you know how to do Adobe Premiere, or whether you know how to use um, uh, Java very well, or whether you know how to you know how to draw, use uh, maybe some new new softwares, or to use Mac. If you have people skills, you will be able to. You will be relevant. You will always be relevant. Communication skills, marketing, these are very safe investments. And what, when we say they are safe investments, it means that if you spend your time learning these skills, you will be relevant for a long time. So then we now have the type, type, type of investment, which are large, large cap. These are, the, these are like the big, big, for instance, in, if you look at in the financial world, you are talking about people like uh, uh, Nigerian breweries. Is it Nigerian breweries? Uh, this, um, uh, the banks like First Bank that have been there for a long time, you know, uh, investment like Guinness companies that have been there for hundreds of years. They are, you know, they are, they are big already. You know, it's safe. They are safe, but they don't yield much interest. You know, they give you a modest interest, but they are like they are like established. You know, get it? They are like established stock. So these are skills that if you look at what you are doing or your area. Or your, your area of expertise, you know, look at these are things that have been there for four to five years. A lot of companies are using these skills. Uh, you know, demand is increasing, is always on the increase. And they are also trying to get into new markets. These are skills that you think you can, they, they, they can take you into, you know, a, a, a lot of people are using, for instance, I'm trying to give an example of. Uh, Something, for instance, Microsoft Word, for instance, learning how to use a Microsoft Word is like there's virtually no company where you go to where you they're not using Microsoft Word. So if you learn how to, if you spend time to learn, learning how to use Microsoft Word might not bring much, it might not see um, more people paying you so much, you know, for using Microsoft Word, but it's something that is relevant. It's something that is like if you don't have it, it's almost like, ah, are you in this? Are you in this part of which part of the world are you from? You know, those are like these are large talk. Microsoft Office is everywhere. They are large talk. You know, their demand is increasing. There's no prayer you want to get a job now. They will ask you, do you know how to use Microsoft Word? Do you know, if it has to do you know how to use a computer, mostly what they are asking you, do you know how to use Microsoft Word? Do you know how to type? These are like stocks that are everywhere. So investing in those things, they are large, large stock. So I've taken time to explain that. No, 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 okay, this one is explaining last stop. When you see big, big companies, Microsoft, you know, Facebook, you know, those are when those big companies are using it. So the principle, the second principle of investing your time in what you learn is create a portfolio. So based on all these stocks that I've mentioned, you know, you've seen the penny stock, those are skills that are new in the market. You see the safe stock, those are skills that the 
they they are they are relevant over the years skills they will always be relevant, like people's skills marketing skills sales design skills that skills that will be relevant and then the last one that large skill stocks are like skills in areas where big companies are already making use of it you know big companies are making use of such skills so how do we invest our time in these three type of skills or stocks so you have to create a portfolio that's the second principle the first principle is identifying those things the second principle is creating your portfolio so how do we create a portfolio you distribute a portfolio so there's a principle that I was shared in that particular book about uh, the intelligent investor. It's called the 50 50 30 20 rule. That it is how so you invest 50% of your time in large caps which are large stocks, 30% in safe investments and 20% in dependent stocks depending on your age or how how when I mean age it mean, it means your how long number of your work years of working experience. For instance, if you are already like we are already having like 10 to 15 years working experience. You, you are considered an old person in this regard, you know. I mean, and your, the way you share these investments, or your, the way you share your portfolio will be different from someone that is quite younger. So for someone that is younger, maybe you are like three, four years, three, four, five years working experience, we expect you to use like 50. So 50% 50 of your time in skills that are like, basic like in large cap skills that are used like in microsoft for instance you know there's virtually all the big companies most of them use microsoft most of the big companies use windows you know so on. you know like using if if you don't know how to use uh, windows you can you know yes i know it can be this one can be debatable because a lot of people are now um moving and to what they call it, Apple, Mac. You know, but when you talk about most of all these large, large companies, they already have a kind of um, skill that if you use, you always be relevant to them. So 50% of your time should be invested in this large, large camp, skills that are used by big companies, 30% in savings investments. These are like people's skills, communication skills, marketing, which are invest about 30% of your time and 20% just in new skills, you know, because they are volatile. That's one of the reasons why they call them penny stocks. They are volatile. They can go down and they can go up. When I mean by they can go down, that they can disappear in any in no time. And when I mean they can go up, like they can just receive a boost, like from zero naira or like 50 kobo per share, they can just suddenly become like 5,000 naira per share. It has happened. Things like that have happened before. For instance, like when you look at all this AI, all this uh, virtual reality, uh, augmented reality, these are new areas where companies that are running that, companies that are based on such uh, businesses, they are like penny stock because people are still trying to understand it. But at the same time, a big investor can just decide to buy over such company for instance now mark uh, facebook can just decide to come and buy that penny stock okay let me go bring it home let me use an instance for instance now AOO now if AOO is listed on the stock exchange now AOO will be, will be a penny stock why because it's still getting you know people how many people are fly using it you know straight trying to penetrate into the into the market let's assume suddenly United Nations just decided to use AO to distribute funds. You can imagine the kind of boost that that one will bring. So anybody, the, the value will suddenly just skyrocket. And that thing can only happen with the kind of change it will bring to people that have invested in AO will be, will, will, will be so drastic that you'll be wondering like, wow. You... <laughs> You know, you're wondering like, wow, you know, so it can, penny stock can, has its capacity to transform you from zero to very high value. And it also can transform you from where you are. And you can imagine somebody that invested all they have in, in uh, this company that just disappeared now, uh, OP, for instance. Let's assume OP, uh, OP, all right, you know, we all know what happened now. They've packed up eventually. You can imagine that somebody that invested all his life into OP. OP just came within within a year, and everything just disappeared. 
So those are advances. So anybody, you, you, that's why they say 20 to 10 percent of your investment of your time should invested be invested in search because they can just disappear. So those are when you are looking at skills to invest in. Take note of that. So let me go over it again. About that 20 percent, you know, we one thing we need to notice that. Don't worry about what's in the future. A lot of people have a tendency of worrying that ah, this thing I'm doing, there's a new skill that is coming new. I might just become irrelevant. It doesn't happen. You don't, you will not go jobless tomorrow because something new just happened. So calm down, <laughs> like the trend, calm down. If you don't learn one way or the other, you will. For instance, if there's a new skill, if you're into, uh, let me use a uh, catchy for instance. If if Kachi is a video person, if there's a new skill in town and Kachi decides not to learn it, and eventually the skill become uh, the skill or the software becomes big, one way or the other, for him to continue, he will still learn it. You understand? So there is no need to be afraid, like ah, because of this new thing that just come to town, I better abandon what I'm doing and go and learn it because I might go out of job. No, you will not go out of job. So investing little time to new will not um, will, is okay. You don't be under pressure to learn something new like uh, and now start to invest over too much of your time because it's still a risk. It can go down and it can go up. So change happens gradually and you know follow along for more okay sorry just follow along for more people sorry for i'm reading word for word <laughs> so i hope uh, if there's any question you know you can start typing in i'm trying to rush through so this third principle is buy low and sell high that's the third principle and when we say buy low it means that once a new skill is coming in try invest small in it for instance uh, something new just happened you just, you just had that ah for instance like tiktok let's use tiktok for people for those of us that are like we this is a marketing team tiktok just came in some people might just say ah, TikTok. who knows what's going to happen to tiktok tiktok is still new it won't do you any harm if you invest a little time in understanding how tiktok works because tiktok is for instance is an example of a penny stock tomorrow or in one year's time tiktok might become the big thing it might be where everybody is and if you had invested, if you had started creating your profile or building a presence on TikTok now, that a lot of few people are in it, you will have, you will start gaining ground. This is a this is an example of what happened to people that were now influencers on Instagram and on uh, all these other Facebook social media that are big. Some people started early when this Instagram and co came out. Some people had already started using it, you know, trying to create a profile, building audience gradually, you know. Then. We were not sure. Some people were speaking against it. Ah, it's new. It is some pack up. It is new. But eventually, now today, the thing became very big. You understand? Hell, uh, I said house party. You know, things like that. You can invest like ten percent of your time. If it disappeared, you it won't be pain because you didn't use too much time. You didn't spend too much time with uh, learning it or investing an entire business or spending. You can imagine now. You want to unite entire depend your entire marketing campaign is now built around something that is still new. They are not sure, and you have already built a profile. Maybe some people are, and people have already. Had, it's only on this uh, small thing that just came out that you have built your entire company. And after six months, nobody is using it again. It will be like you have wasted, you know, time. You have wasted your efforts. Other other areas where you should have been developing. You know, you will, you have left it untouched. So, buy low. So, when I mean, when we say buy low, when these new things come out, in getting early, TikTok is out. Getting early, spend 10, 15 percent of your time understanding it. Do small, create a small profile. That's you know, pushing it gradually. You don't spend too much of the time. And how do we get in early? You know, do a tutorial on it. Read a book about it. Create a side project maybe you can just create a small you know project a small campaign on it but don't jump ship don't change jobs because ah now the there's a there's a new there's a new thing you know coming tiktok i want to go and learn how to market on TikTok, and then you now abandon 
Yeah, yeah, because one company is now trending on TikTok, you know, it can go down the drain suddenly. So getting early understanding, wait, do your market research, look at the check market trends, see what is happen, happening in the market, know the, the way it is going. Ask questions from people that are in the industry, not just people that are just uh, bloggers or people that are just doing it for money. Because at times, some of these new, new skills or new companies that come out, because somebody is being paid to promote it, they come on social media, come online, they come on, they be bombarding our faces with different things. We are now be thinking, ah, man, this thing is trending, you know, this thing. Meanwhile, the people in the industry know that they've seen the faults of such skills. They know that this thing will not last. For instance, now, you know, maybe there's a new software that comes up. I'm just talking about uh, editing, editing, I don't know what. Maybe there's a new software that just came up. And people like Kachi that have been in the industry, they've tested it, they spent, you know, five, 10%, they've said that, that this software, it has a lot of faults, this thing will not last. But someone that is just new, because one blogger is writing about it every time, he's posting about it every time, they just abandon what they are learning or what they are using before and now jump into it. So, and suddenly the thing crashes. You know, those people will now be finding, trying to find their way back. So it's it's better to ask people, you, it's better to ask people or look at what people like Kachi will say about such software or people that have been in the industry for a while, you know, to say about such software before you jump ship. You know, that's what I mean by doing research on new skills ask people that are really in the business and one of the there, there's a website that people use for if for technology for instance uh you know for tech even apart from tech you can go to stack overflow go to code on quora.com on stack overflow um um even google self has a way of giving you an idea go on google search make sure that you check the trend there's this um website that i use trendwatching.com there you can see if if that thing you are trying to learn is relevant there's this site too thoughtworks.com for people trying to learn the new tech these sites can give you insights of whether this thing you're about to this skill you want to learn is going to last for a while then don't buy into short time hype you know like i said because some people are just like blockchain you know blockchain technology is still struggling yes some of these things will Grow, but you can't see. For instance, on AR, AI, VR, all these things—they are new. People, should, we should learn them. Just be aware of them, not to abandon what we are learning or what we are doing and jump into it, because they can go south. You know, that's why I said don't invest more than twenty percent of your time in any case of this thing. So, don't be greedy. That's one of the things that we say in there. Don't be greedy about it. And just stop trying to be future proof because ah, this is a new thing now. Like, uh, is this is the future, this is the future. You want to, you know, you know, I want to like uh what the truth is like what you are doing now will, will not just disappear. What you know now will not just disappear. So gain ground on what you're doing. Let's put 50%, 50, 30% 50, principle, apply it to what you are doing now, you know, because especially if it's in a safe environment. And also, please don't put all your eggs in one basket. Diversify your portfolio. Always diversify your portfolio. Don't say, ah, I just want to know how to use uh, uh, PowerPoints. I don't care about other presentation tools. Just do no. Diversify your portfolio. Spend, you know, just like we said, 50, 30, piece, 20, or 50, 40, 10. Make sure you have other backups, you know, other things that you do. Now that's principle three, principle three, taking calculated risk. So number four is to diversify. Like I said, diversify, the scene is always changing. Things are always changing. Make sure you spread. The more things you know, the better you are. Yes, the more things you know, the better you are. But at the same time, you need to look at how we know more. You know, when I talk about time are you investing into knowing more? Because if you spread yourself too thin, you will average out your, your competence. Don't try to know everything. You know, a good rule of the term, according to the book, the intelligent version say like, have like 10 to 20 items in your portfolio at every time. And that 20, 10, 20 to 20, 10 to 20 items, you know that use that rule of 50, 30, 20 principle to share your time on them. 
when you have like 10 to 20 items, like 10 to 20 things, 10 to 20 skills, you know, that you are looking at, maybe 50% of those skills will be in the area of large stock. 30% of those items, of those skills, of those 20 skills, you know, should be in safe investment, things that, you know, they, can, they will always be relevant. And then the remaining 10% of it should be things that can disappear tomorrow. And it can also make you blow, like they used to say. So over diversification will average out to your advantage. I've said it, you will not, when you are too spread out, too thin, you will not be good at one thing. You know, so they will, you'll be master of, like they say, master of everything. Yeah. Jack of all trades, master of none, Abi. Uh, that's principle four. Then principle five is make regular investments. You know, make regular investments. When I say make regular investments, we mean that we mean that consistently be disciplined and be consistent in investment. Don't say that ah, I'm going, I'm going for something. I have something to do. I'm not doing. I, I still have a long time. Okay, like you know, I, I want to. I want to jai or I want to do some things first before, you know, there's a way you can always be disciplined and be consistent in learning. You know, maybe every day or every 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 three months, I register, I do a course on, you know, online. Every six months, I go for a course there or every six, every week or every month, I read a book on this topic. You know, every, every, maybe every week, listening to a podcast on a particular topic you know if you slow down you will lose that means if you slack so learning every day will keep to keep yourself updated this you know this is a very key principle we need to keep learning he said if you grow one percent every day you will go 37 times in a year that is if you learn one percent of something every day and one percent of a day they said is 15 minutes so if you spend 15 minutes every day learning something new in that thing in that area you are learning something new in one year you go 37 times you can see how the principle of compound interest works so regular investments is a another key principle in learning new things invest regularly yeah yeah so that's what principle six which is the last principle is about evaluating and evolve evaluate yourself and evolve you know, review what you are, review what you are doing every six months. Don't review it too early and don't review it too late because sometimes maybe you are learning how to, you just decide there's a new thing you are learning about and you review it early and you feel like this thing is not pushing. It might be too early. It might just be about the time that the thing is going to enter into mainstream. That's when you quit. So don't do it too early. Don't do it too late. And once you review, evaluate what you have in your stock, in your skill, you look at your skill sets. When you evaluate it and see that these things, certain skills in which in which you have in your portfolio is out of fashion, they're already dead or dying, just remove them. You remove them from the list of your skill sets and look for new ones based on market research. Like market research, you have asked people, you have asked professionals, you have discussed with your mentors, you know what is new. Add them, remove the old ones, things that are no longer relevant. Remove them from your portfolio and had the new ones, you know. So that's how to evaluate and evolve, you know. Okay, there's an example here about, you know, things take that to a trending sometimes ago, but no longer trending. So another thing you need to know when you are talking about evaluation and uh, evolving is don't be emotionally invested in any particular skill. It's just a means of livelihood. You know, don't be emotionally connected because I, let me tell you, for instance, there was a story. I remember when computers first started, uh, came into the mainstream, when in those uh, early 2000s, when people still spend time to do printing, when, when people were printing with, um, I don't know if anybody here is involved with printing. Hello, please, can you, um, am I, can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There was something I was saying. Yes, we can. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so uh, there was this time when computers just came into the system. There's this printing press. If you are, if you are familiar with printing, then there's this old machine that they used to, manual machine that they used to print then. 
So when computers came, there was this story of this man that refused. I was like, ah, computer care. He was using typewriter and all those things in his, in his business. He, didn't, he refused to, you know, it was emotionally connected to, maybe he inherited that uh, printing press from his father or something. I don't know. So it was emotionally connected. He didn't want to do it with old tech. Before you know it, after a while, he just discovered that everybody left. When you go, you go to some place, you, you spend uh, 10 days before your book is ready. Meanwhile, you can go to another shop where they're using computer, and one day, your work is ready, and it's even better. So eventually, the man <laughs> was forced to close down. They went to go and do something else. So don't be emotionally invested because it's your father that taught you how to code or before it's, because it's, your, it's your, your first girlfriend that taught you how to, to do one thing. And I said, oh, emotionally, you are connected. You don't want to leave. You don't want to, no. It's just a way of, you know, livelihood. If you feel that this thing is no longer working, remove it. Go into something new. You know, don't be emotionally invested. And the next thing is be true to yourself. Be honest. Be sincere with yourself. When you are evaluating yourself, because another problem people do have, like, when you are evaluating your own self, people tend to deceive themselves. They know they don't tell themselves the truth. Be true to yourself. Know your strengths, know your weakness, know what you want in life, know your purpose. Tell yourself the truth that this thing I'm doing is not working. I need to move into another thing. So that's principle six to evaluate your portfolio at regular interval. And lastly, in my last slide, there are some books that was recommended. The intelligent investor that I'm talking about is written by Benjamin Graham. You can check it up. And there are some other books that the guy recommended. The Startup of You, The Pragmatic Programmer. You can leave that one out. You're not into programming. <laughs> then this book, I like this one particularly. It's so good. They can't ignore you. It is be, be good at what you do that people cannot ignore you. Uh, with these few words of mine, I hope I've not uh, confused you. I hope I've been able to make some sense. And that is the end of my presentation. Questions, questions. I hope I've not taken too much time. Questions. Hmm. Well, look, I know that you're into stock market or like this. You can be a stock broker. <laughs> <laughs> it was trending back then. Now everybody was into it. <laughs> Any question? Anybody have any question for me? Esther, the plant, the herbalist. You need to. You can apply this thing when you are considering the new plants that you should buy, you or that you have in your portfolio of plants. Hello. I'm here, Veronica. Actually. This this is a very great, oh, this is a very, very great topic. Having to like merge um, investment and um, um, learning together, he actually opened my eyes to like some things, and I, I'm actually going to apply them. Really, I'm going to apply them. Thank you, Raliko. Thank you, thank you, Esther. Boss Augustine, <coughs> you catch me on Brother, people should ask, ask you, a question man. now or you want to again i i i like the <coughs> i like the fact that you you use that okay can hear you okay so i i think i i really like the the angle that you use this investment thing strangely i was in a a financial you know, tutelage class and they said this same thing that you said that investment is actually based on age like um, the three the three tiers of investment high risks medium risks low risks and all of that and the way you perfectly matched it into this learning it's quite um brilliant if i must say so the the fact that when you're young there's some things that is critical to learn and and it will then when you're going older you know there's some things that you know it's nice to have some things that um, you know it's okay to have but you know i just like that analogy so it's brilliant just wanted to say that thank you sir 
Mm. Ay. Um, I just want, I just want to thank, I just want to thank you very much. Um, thank you, Brad. Thank you, Deb Spades. Thank you, Brad Lincoln, for the um refresher. I mean, I think Thanks. I have, I have actually been a a student of investment for a long time, and um, this is this is quite very related. To it. And the fact that it, it drives home to not just financial investment, but to also human capital investment too, really made it made a lot of sense. It just refreshes my mind and brings me back to I mean, uh, takes me back to what I used to know, and now linking it to human capital investment, which really makes sense. And that's why when you started the, the session, I was. I, I I wanted it to be recorded so that I can have it and listen over and over again. It's really a refresher, and I I would always want to refresh my memory of this particular one one in lifetime opportunity with um the world known TEDx speaker. <laughs> yeah, you are you are serious. <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, my this is stop it. This is a really good mm -hmm. topic. Um, I like the part where I like this last part where I'm learning one percent every day. I mean, that's what I try to do. Then about the um, for me, this just taught me to prioritize what I learn and just to make sure that every time you're, you're learning what will be valuable for you. And that you're not wasting your time learning what you're doing. Yeah, so that's what I got out of this. Um, thank God you recorded it so that we can have, because I was going to ask if we can have your slides later. Yes, we can have it. But seeing that you recorded it, it's better. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Deb Spades. Oh, Tara has gone. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know if there are still questions and conversations to have. Um, Lincoln, thank you very much. Even if I didn't take anything from your stuff, the one thing is obvious is on my train as to speak. It's that if I if I can figure out stuff 15 minutes every day, um, I would have I would have the 7% growth at the end of the year, which is amazing. So thank you very much. Um for next week's session, Esther will be in charge. Um, I don't know if there's any other thing. But I can just leave you guys to enjoy yourselves while I join my other meeting. Ayo, you know how it be now. Move. Ayo, move. Move to the next meeting. I need recording. I need recording, please. Uh, I don't even know. Let me move in the recording. I'll send it to you guys after. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Thank you.